Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to today's video. Lately we have been covering a lot of Sega stuff, which is brilliant, but I would like to take a little bit of a break from that. You see why I do indeed collect a lot of Master System stuff. These days I can't afford to do that as much as I used to be able to, and that's because the price of the damn things is going up. I'm very lucky in the fact that I've got a lot of the games. I got a huge amount of them. The main ones that's left is the tech toy ones, which costs a stupid amount, and ones that are crap. I've got the best ones. I'm very lucky to have the best ones, so yeah. But what do I collect instead? Because while I am indeed a gamer first, I am a collector. I love collecting games. Love collecting Master System, love collecting Game Boy. Neither of them is an easy option. So what do I collect instead? Indie games. I love indie games. They are brilliant. They have such original ideas. The AAA games of today is the same thing again and again and again. Mostly, save the princess again? Rather shoot the princess. Indie games are brilliant. I love collecting them. And it doesn't matter what you collect them on. I personally collect them on the Nintendo Switch. That's because as I get older, finding time to game is getting harder and harder. So portable gaming is just so convenient for me. That's why I go for the Switch. We're going to talk about ah. indie games on the Nintendo Switch today. Don't worry, if you want any of these games, they are, I think all of them in fact are on other platforms as well. So you don't have to do Switch. It's just me with the Switch, but you can do whatever you want. I will say one honorary mention, we're not going to go into it. No Man's Sky. I love this game, but the reason why I'm not going to cover it properly in this video is I've spoken about this thing so much that I feel like we're not going to cover anything new or excitingly new to the long-term viewers of this channel. So we're going to try and do some stuff that either I've never talked about before or I've spoken about it but haven't gone into any great detail or have never really covered it. I hope that makes sense. So the first game, Arcade Paradise. I love this game. It's a short one and I have beaten it about twice already. Um, both times, funnily enough, when I was on holiday. I don't know why. The game starts off with this weird sort of 90s sketchy animation. And just when you think, am I going to enjoy this game? Am I going to like this game? Well, yes you are, because the main character, look at that, look, pause a minute. He owns a master system. Doesn't matter what you think, look at that. The master system is iconic. No other console in the world is that shape. Don't argue with me, it's a master system. Meaning that the people who created this game are geniuses. This is a game that I would really like to see Mike play on live at the arcade. Problem with that is the bit I would like to see him play live at the arcade, and I think everyone would enjoy seeing him play, is the end bit. He probably won't get to play it and get to the end before live at the arcade sort of stops completely, so. Unfortunately, we're going to miss out on that, though. Another reason why I definitely want to cover it today. Basically, you are in charge of your own arcade. Buying cabinets, making money, blah, 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 business, business, business. Now, as you can see from here, the arcade bit has loads of games you can play. They're all great fun. Some of them are blatant rip-offs of others. Like, there's one game here. I admittedly forgot to get footage of it. Um, there's a rip-off game of Arkanoid. The game has dogs in it for the platforms and balls and all sorts, and it's called Bark Annoyed. Ah ha ha ha! One light is kind of clever. But you don't just start off with an arcade in this game. No, when the game starts, you actually have a laundromat, I think you call it, place to wash clothes. I don't know, I own the washing machine, so I've never gone to one of these places, but I know they exist because. My wife used to watch EastEnders and there's that pain in the butt dot cotton with the washing and the clothes and wow, I'm showing my age. But anyway, on Arcade Paradise, the point is to turn it from Laundromat into Arcade, one step at a time. It would seem like it's a laborious thing having to sort out washing and then try to do business deals to get cabinets, to then get rid of washing machines, to then sort this place out as a successful business. But it's surprisingly fun. I know, it's it's weird how that bit of the game is fun, but when you finally 
have the arcade itself completely done, unlocked, and you got everything. It's great fun. I just, this is the sort of arcade I wish still existed. And you would think, oh, that kind of arcade would make money today. No, it wouldn't. Humans are lazier than ever. We don't want to go out. We don't. So if you miss playing at your arcade, or you missed out on being able to play an arcade at all, a really old school one, get this game because it's perfect for this. I hope they do a sequel one day, Arcade Paradise 2 or whatever the hell. Um, I don't know how they would do it, but I hope they do because this was great fun. It was a really simple idea and it's just so enjoyable. A must have, if you ask me. Next game. Carry on. You awake in your jar, surrounded by glass. But through the glass, you can hear voices. You can hear the outside world. There are humans there. They put you in this container. They try to control you. They are outside. Where you must be. Yep, it's Carry On, a game I have spoken about in the past, uh, I think on 16 Bitchin Podcast. Um, pretty sure I covered Carry On on that. This game, essentially, rather than fight the monster, survive the monster, no. You are the monster, and you can kill everyone. It's great fun. You look like the Carnage symbiote from Spider-Man. You basically tentacle your way around this laboratory which you are trying to escape the game is basically you trying to get stronger and more powerful via, via killing collecting certain power uppy bits all, all sorts of that sort of thing it's basically a metroidvania game you are going to have a lot of going there finding you can't get through a door going somewhere else get a power go back to said door that kind of stuff it's quite fun but there is a few bits where you just think, oh, where was that bloody door? Killing people has never been more fun. You pick them up kind of like John Carpenter's The Thing, and you can smash them about all over the place, rip them in half. Eating them gives you health, power, biomass. In other words, it makes you bigger. Top tip, gents, if you want to get bigger, eat someone. The game is beautifully 2D. I absolutely love it. I will say I have the, uh, what do you call it, limited run, had to think for a minute, limited run edition which comes with a booklet, and I will say this is the only limited run game I've ever bought. Show you some of the pictures and stuff in there. It's quite cool. You see it? You see it? It's quite cool. It's, it's quite cool. I like this. But I will say I love the game so much I had to have it physical which meant having to get it limited run and now you can get it in any damn store because it did so well the game that you can get the physical version anywhere so my advice never go to limited run because they don't live up to their own name anymore plus according to everyone else I know who buys games from them you have to wait a year before you get it after paying I've got a better idea no. If you love old school 2D games and you kind of miss that era of gaming, this is a great one to try out. Plus, there's not many games these days where you get to be the monster and kill everyone. And certainly not in this sort of style where you are like John Carpenter's The Thing. Tentacle pulling your fleshy biomass around, eating anyone you find, getting new powers as you go, invisibility, the ability to smash through tougher walls. You can even, um, was it, not clone people, possess people. And this game even had a very unique trailer made for it in an anime style. I won't show you the whole thing because that'll take up too much time in this video, but if you're interested, have a good look for it on YouTube. You can find it on many other videos in different places. It's pretty cool. Again, another must-have. All these games are going to be must-haves. There's no bad games today, so let's just move on to the next one. Firewatch. A game based in the 80s, which, of course, all the best games ever made were based in the 80s. 
a game based in the 80s, which of course is where all of the greatest games in history were based. All the Sonic the Hedgehog games, I know they came out in the 90s, they were based in the 80s. You probably didn't know that. It's true. It's true. I know it's true because I just made it up. So Firewatch starts with a basically tragic story. It's, it's weird. The game just starts with basic text, really, and a couple of little bits where you can choose this or that, him or her, dog, cat, well, not dog, cat, big dog, small dog, whatever. <laughs> it's, it's not a long part of the game. It's very tiny. But wow, what a piece of story. Truly heartbreaking, this little bit. It, it's quite epic. It's quite fantastic the way they've done it. Managed to cram so much emotion into such a small bit of game. It isn't even really a game. I mean, the text goes from little bits of uh, basic writing, of course, and then just throws you to a tiny bit of gameplay where you can move, get a feel for what the game's going to look like. It's not until a few minutes in that you really get to see what's going on with this game. The whole thing is based in the woods. And while it's not in-depth realism in its artistic style, it is really beautiful. It is so nice to just look at the scenery. Story-wise, I won't go into too much detail because, because the whole game is a story thing. You think Arcade Paradise had loads of little things to it, great fun, their story, not tons of it. Carry On, more of a challenging game, great fun killing stuff, people, whatever. There is story, not a hell of a lot of it. This game is all story, really. First person adventure story driven game. Sound like that. It's, it really is a cool game, but if I go on about the story, I feel like I'm going to screw things up. So, just a tiny little synopsis. Basically, the thing goes around a certain crime that's been committed, and you have to find out what the hell happened. The gameplay itself, in terms of things you have to do, is quite simplistic. You are the fire watch guard guy. Turns out it's an actual job in America, some places in America, where woodland is in so much danger of like catching fire because it's so dry that they have people there to just stop idiots from going there and thinking, I'll have a barbecue or some retarded stuff like that. For example, the first chore you have is something simple. Two drunk girls, fireworks. That's clever, isn't it? The story itself does evolve as it goes along it becomes quite deep and involved and it's not even that heavily linked to the text story at the start that's just something that sort of whets your appetite as to the sort of ride you're gonna have an emotional roller coaster i hate that description but i can't think of any other way to say it God. this game has been out for ages i admittedly do not own a physical version of it in fact i'm not even sure if there is a physical version if there is and you know where i can get it let me know I want it for the collection. But for you who just might want to play it, this game is cheap digitally. It's quite cheap. I should imagine if you get it on Steam, it's cheap as all balls. So you got no reason not to try this one. If you like story games, this is a great one for that. The funny thing is, you could argue the replayability isn't quite there because when you've beaten the game, that's it. You can do the game in different ways, try different paths and stuff, but it doesn't change the story. Not really even a little bit. I mean, maybe a bit-ish, but really no. So the replayability is low. Yet yeah, I've played this a few times. I don't know. It's like, you know when you've got a favourite film and you will watch that film again and again and again? You know what's going to happen in the damn thing. It's a film. This is a story-based game where when you completed it, you know what's going to happen again. Yet for some reason I still enjoyed playing it, so I guess that really says something about the story, the gameplay, the scenery, as I said, while it's not realistic in style, it's more cel-shaded cartoony in some ways, it looks really good. I love this game. And if you can find it cheap, I highly recommend you try it. Next game. Turnip Boy Commits Tax Evasion? Yeah, this is a thing. I don't know why it's a thing, but it's a thing. And it's one of them things where the physical costs over double what the digital does. I'm an idiot. Collector needed it, got physical, yeah. Mm. But for you, 
I would recommend just cut a cheap route the digital because while this is a really fun game and it's really silly, I love the humor, it's bloody short. This is not a long game. Starts off with you, turnip boy, getting a letter through that you have not paid your taxes. You need to pay taxes. Welcome to reality. Hurry up, pay your taxes. Give me money. Turnip's boy response to this is no. And he rips it up. Instantly, I like this vegetable. The mayor comes along and gives you a bollocking. And then you are set out on a quest to basically pay back what you owe. The game gets really fun when you get the sword. And this shows up. -na 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 -na. There's a lot of silly little gamer quips and nods to other games within this. But while the main quest is quite simple, try to pay back what you owe, Radi Ra. There's loads of silly little side quests that are dead fun. I won't spoil them because the humour is something really... You, you've got to see it for yourself, but I will let you know a one because it's a very short quest and can be done all in a swing of a sword. There's this fella who's owed rent by a snail above him. You are asked, please go and get the rent money. So you go up to said snail and stab him. And then you find out, oh, he had the money. He was actually going to pay the rent. So you give the rent money to the fella that asked you to talk to the snail. He's like, what did you do? You killed him! Oh, wait. Never mind. I got monies now. That's the kind of dumb thing you can expect from Turnip Boy commits tax evasion. Seriously, what were people smoking when they came up with this? It's ridiculous. And you know what? I love it. <laughs> this is a great game, but I can't justify to anyone to get the physical one. Because the digital is cheap and goes I see it go on sale all the time so get the digital one this game is well worth playing especially if you want to laugh if you want a quick little game maybe you've just completed a big RPG and you're looking for the next project to go on to what game should I complete now that I have beaten Final Fantasy ease sang else like that why not play a small indie game in between the big games, a palate cleanser. This is perfect for that. It's ridiculous, but it's perfect. Final game of the day, Sword of the Vagrant. This is a game that I knew nothing about until my good friend Tom of Do You Nerd, a channel you should check out, link in the description, but let's be fair if you're watching this, you probably know Do You Nerd because they're good buddies in mine. Tom once mentioned he got a new game, Sword of the Vagrant. He showed me cover the back. No, come to think of it, he got a special like uh, first day edition that came with art books and all this stuff. I couldn't find that. I've only got the standard one as it is. In fact, there is actually, oh, there's a poster in it. Oh, fine. Hang on. Look at that. There's no way I can hold it that doesn't catch some glare off of my lights, but ooh, double-sided. See, this is a great, another great thing about indie games is they come with booklets, they come with posters, they come with keychains and all this other cool stuff. What do the AAA games come with? Nothing. In fact, half the time, AAA games are just white in here and there's nothing. It's really pathetic. Pull your finger out, you Nintendo idiots. Any hibs. The art of Sword of the Vagrant truly is awesome. There are two things in particular that I especially like. <sighs> Gameplay-wise, it's kind of like an RPG hack and slash. The reason I say it's got RPG to it is the immense amount of story and the fact that there is some... Hmm, it's not really character customization. There's like a skill wheel where you can unlock certain abilities as you go very RPG-ish, but the rest of the game is pretty much a hack and slash that requires an immense amount of skill. This is kind of a challenging game. In fact, I haven't beaten it, but I really wanted to talk about it. Well, how far did I get? I got to this one fella, and I thought, ah, here's the guy I'm looking for. And he was this hollow-eyed purple dude. And then, oogity boogity whoop, he transformed into a <laughs> and murderized me. I got deaded by a big bad wolf. I tried, but I died. <laughs> the cool thing about this game is though, it has so many endings that sometimes when you die, you get 
a new sort of ending, a new story bit you would not have got had you not died this way. So while, yeah, it sucks I died, the story bit I got, really cool. Really cool. The art style they've gone for here really is nice. The background, so much detail to every little piece of scenery. It truly is sensational. The characters themselves, they all seem to have an interesting amount of story to them. There's hardly any idiots here or any boring people that just exist for the sake of it. And like I said, the difficulty can get a bit steep at times. This is a game you will probably get a bit annoyed with. But if you like a challenge, this is a good one. If you like side-scrolling beat-em-ups, I would say try this out. If you like your hack and slash, then obviously this is for you. And if you just like, I don't know, old school, dark, not so much depressing, but more of a murderous darkness vibe, then the story of this is definitely for you. I won't spoil any more of that. The story is quite unique, really. It's, I feel like it's, it's a bummer. It's like Firewatch. If I tell you too much, I've spoiled stuff. I really don't want to do that because I really want you to check it out. Although it is indeed one of them Xena warrior princess things where you are the super powerful swords woman who is clad in the world's greatest and toughest armor. Or the sheer bloody lack of it. But as a game, like all the others today, it's fantastic. I hope you check it out. And I've waffled on for long enough, I reckon, because if you let me, I will talk about indie games forever. I'm quite obsessed. I've got quite a collection. I'm very proud of it. And I'm still getting more stuff. Yep. Can't be helped. Has to be done. Thank you very much for watching today's video. Like, comment, subscribe, all that pony. And if you want to see some more indie stuff, maybe we'll fit in another video before this is all over. Maybe not. We'll see. Again, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.